On today's episode of Locked on Wild, Liam Ogren, come on down. You're Locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. What is happening, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Locked on Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you, as always, for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Game Time. You can download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKDOWNNHL for $20 off your first purchase. On today's episode of Locked on Wild, Jesse Pierce of the Bar Down Beauties podcast and NHL.com joins us to discuss the final few games of the season. Now that it's officially over, playoffs are not going to happen this year. And so uh, we will discuss what comes next and how we got to this point. My name is Seth Topal, your daily Minnesota Wild insider, credentialed media member, and joined by a good friend of the show, Jesse Pierce of the Bar Down Beauties podcast. Jesse, it is official now. No playoffs this year. Tea times already booked. And so uh, basically now just kind of playing out the final few games here and turning our attention to next year. Yeah, you know what? I'm glad it's finally official. I was sick of saying, technically, they're not eliminated. Technically, there's still a 1% chance. Technically, no technicalities anymore, you guys. They are officially done, and we shouldn't be surprised. I've seen a lot of people become a little unhinged, a little unglued, that now the playoffs are done. There's no chance they're going to make it, and I'm like, why? Like, where where is this confusion? Where is this shock and awe coming from? If you had listened to Locked On Wild, if you had listened to Bard on Beauties, anybody since the beginning of the year, we were pretty realistic about the expectations for this season. And uh, sure enough, they've come to fruition. But I, for one, I'm okay with it. I'm excited to hit the golf course today. Literally have my tee time booked. First 18 of the season. Cannot wait. Uh, and Minnesota Wild members will not be far behind me as they've just got a couple more games to push out before their season is done. So here we are, Seth. Yeah, here here we are. And we got some exciting news yesterday that hopefully we will get a chance to see as early as tomorrow as Liam Ugrin got uh, the call up to the Minnesota Wilds. Uh, kind of felt like this was maybe going to be a possibility after he um, made the trip to Iowa, got a couple of games under his belt. And Jesse, this is just another one of those names that we've heard about as kind of this next wave of players that hopefully will have a big impact on this team. What do you think the chances are we see young Liam get his NHL debut against Vegas? Or are we more likely going to see him against, say, San Jose? I mean, it doesn't really matter, right? I, I say, why not play him against Vegas? You're not playing for anything. You're not really going to be a spoiler. I know Vegas is still kind of in this hunt. Nashville's giving them a run for their money as well. But I would say play him. Play all the young guys. That's kind of what you're looking at. I love the move. I love that they brought up Jesper Velstead even while they were still in the hunt. He had a great second debut. We'll count that as his debut, right? We don't <laughs> need to count that Dallas monstrosity. Uh, it's not fair to young Jesper. But no, I think that's the goal for the next couple games is try some new things. D take a look at the young guys. See what the line combinations look like. Liam Ogren is a guy that is going to make a push for a roster spot coming out of training camp next year. He is slotted in as that player to really watch and is kind of part of the bright future for Minnesota. So now's the time. Play Liam, play him both games if he wants. Why not? Give him give him a go uh, because that's what the end of the regular season needs to look like for Minnesota. It's preparing for the future, getting fans excited about the future and seeing how Liam Ogren can transition into that NHL caliber player. Yeah, 100%. And the fact now that it is April 18th is the last game. That's it. It's there, There's nothing after that and to be honest, like just looking at how the wild did against some of these central division teams, I, I think we're I think we're okay with that. Not oh and ten guys. Oh and ten yeah. against the top three, 
in the wet. Like, that's not okay. You no. you didn't want to make the playoffs any way to get routed in four games in the first no. round. It just wasn't going to be fun. We don't need that. But we can go away from the win at all costs mantra, Jesse, that we've seen quite a bit this year where you're throwing like 25, 26, 27 minutes at guys like Karol Kaprizov, double shifting them. Like we we can go back to four lines now and just trying to see some of those combinations, but there are spots in this lineup that have been pretty vacant, <laughs> and uh, I think the uh, second line wing is probably the one that uh, that is most commonly frustrating to people. Why not give Liam Ugrin a chance to just slot right in there with with Rossi and Zuccarello? Or I, I saw suggested you maybe go. Boldy, Rossi, Ugrin, and you go back to Capri. I, I, I don't know. I just, I think we've seen enough of the the Marcus Johansson experience mm-hmm. to be ready to just see literally anything else. I think it's time for Marcus Johansson to experience the press box a little bit more. Um, and you know, you can play it kindly to him. Oh, we're just giving young guys a look. If you're really worried about it, that can be the way management handles it. But you're absolutely right. I mean, I think you need to take a look at some different line combinations. Obviously, Jules Erickson, Matt Boldy, and Kirill Kaprizov have some great chemistry, and I do love that. But you also want to spread out that scoring. You need to get that secondary scoring. That's been a problem nearly all season for the Minnesota Wild is getting other lines going. Um, So I think you take a look at, yeah, scrambling some of that up. Main point is getting out of the regular season healthy too, right? You want these guys to head into the offseason healthy. We saw what it looked like when Kirill Kaprizov had an injury in the offseason and how long it took him to kind of come back from that because he had an off off offseason. So I think that's the other thing. You're not, yeah, you don't need to double shift Kirill. I know Kirill's a guy that's going to want to continue continue to play at the highest level. And I'm not certainly saying for Minnesota's sake, I know everybody's looking at the draft positioning, right. And where Minnesota could fall. And I think you're still going to see a competitive squad. I'm not saying throw it all in and just hand, hand them the L's, but you know, certainly just try some new things. And I think John Hines is a coach that is willing and likely to do that. Right. He's a guy that's definitely going to see this as a learning opportunity and as a growing moment. So I think you'll definitely see some different looks, some different tweaks here and there. I'd also say you play Philip Gustafson. I think everybody knows it feels very likely that Mark Andre Fleury comes back. So maybe you showcase Philip Gustafson or see what more you want from him because you're going to have to readdress that extension come this offseason, especially with Jesper in the wings. And if Marc-Andre Fleury indeed does return for another year, which again seems very likely at this point, I think you got to look at what you want to do with Gustafson. So I think you split that time between him and uh, and Volstead too to, to end the stretch. And let's let's give Murat some capable line mates too. Yes. Like, please, please. Please, because he like it's fun. It's fun to have seen him actually carry his line a couple of times. But then you look at who his line mates were in many cases, Freddie Goudreau, in some cases, Marcus Johansson. You're like, yeah, he should be carrying that line. Right. And Matt Zuccarello was getting upset about that, too, I believe. Like, you could kind of see just an eye groan and a roll when you find his line mates. Credit to Freddie Goudreau. He works hard, right? Mm-hmm. I will. I will not say that. I just can't quite say the same for Marcus Johansson, which I I do. I don't say that lightly because that is kind of a very harsh take, but there are so many games that we've seen Marcus Johansson kind of take shifts off or lollygag in the offensive zone. And it's frustrating because he has an offensive capability and he has skill and talent and the way that he can stick handle and the way that he can shoot and score when he wants to. And it's just kind of frustrating to watch that be rolled out night after night. I'd rather see Adam Beckman in there. Who's going to give it his all. I'd rather see, you know, even bump Mason shop. I don't care what it looks like, but give somebody that's, you know, going to fight for their chance and take advantage of being in a top six opportunity. And you're absolutely right. Murat, who's Nadinov deserves better. I mean, I think he's been fine through this opening. Obviously, again, there's still a learning curve for him, but if you want to see him succeed, much like Kirill, much like Matt Boldy, you need to put it much like Marco Rossi, right? You've seen how that's really helped him. You need to put him in the best positions and opportunities. So yeah, I think both Ogren and who's Nadinov in particular need to be given some very good line mates. And I think, that's a good thing for Matt Zuccarello, too, because you'll maybe get him going again on that third wheel. 42 games for Marcus Johansson this year with one or fewer shots. I I hate the fact that that is something that has had to have been tracked, mm. but I feel it's my obligation to keep that running tally. And I think that is that's just an absurd amount of games to 
have not really factored in when you are in the position that you're in. Second line wing, you're expected to be a scoring line. Right. And it just it just have not seen that line be able to do it consistently because you've got playmakers in Zuccarello. You've got a guy in Marco Rossi that can get to the net. You, you got to have a shooter that can take advantage of some of those other opportunities and one or fewer shots. I mean, no shots on goal. Hard to score. Hard mm -hmm. to score in that in that situation. And you've seen certain game situations definitely where Matt Boldy's shut down and he's got no shots or Kirill or Jewelers neck. But the biggest problem is, yeah, when that top line's not going, nobody seems to be helping or contributing, right? And so it's kind of like you do have to look at what the problems are. And Marcus Johansson is a large part of that problem. I think, you know, Matt Zuccarello struggles because he is a pass first guy, right? He's a very pass happy player. And, and that's great because he's a great playmaker. Marco Rossi's dabbled into being that finisher, right? I think that's where that has worked. But yeah, you need somebody else on that wing that is not afraid to take the shot. And that's just not Marcus Johansson. I think Liam Ogren fits in perfectly right there because you want Marat to be your strong guy up the middle. And I think he will be that. He's a little bit smaller than I think I anticipated. But <laughs> um, yeah, put Liam Ogren up there and have him be the finisher because that's what that second line definitely needs is somebody not afraid to shoot. And that solves a world of problems for the Minnesota Wild heading into next year. Yeah, it just it really does just put us at ease even just watching knowing, OK, you got somebody on that line that's capable of letting it rip. Um, yes because it's that's just so sorely needed. Uh, we're going to transition to kind of how did we get to this point? Because there have been a lot of different things that have uh, factored in to what we have seen this year, which is very a very uneven season is uh, is how I would characterize it. So we'll take a look at some of those factors which surprised us the most. And our big theme will be going forward. Where do we go from here? So we will uh, take a look at all of that. With Jesse Pierce of the Bar Down Beauties podcast, as we continue today's episode of Locked On Wild after this. Today's episode of Locked On Wild is brought to you by Indeed. When you're drafting your fantasy team, do you ever wish you could handpick the best stars for your business team? If you're building your talent roster, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you can do it all with Indeed. Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like matching, assessments, and virtual interviews. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. That's Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Welcome back to today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure for your second listen, you check out the Bar Down Beauties podcast today. Uh, weekly episodes with Jesse and Kirsten and uh, also content throughout the week as well. I know the uh, Frozen 4 coming up here tonight. So, uh, Jesse, you'll be repping that as well as uh, a couple more late games here the rest of this week between the Golden Knights and the Sharks. But you guys do it best by just going to bed. Like, Yeah. No, I, uh, I feel a little bad for my husband. I think I reeled him in. He assumed that he had a woman who loves hockey, which she does. Don't get me wrong. But ever since I've started working in hockey, I watch less and less. And he's like, what is this? What has happened to us? Then I was like, well, I got you. That's what, that's how I got you in hook, line and sinker. Uh, no, especially the late games. Like my kids don't give a bleep if I am up until 11 o'clock, which is not helpful because tonight the Frozen Four second semifinal game is likely to go until probably 11, 1130 if things all start on time. So I'm used to it. But yeah, right now with the games not mattering, I, I just don't need to. I don't need to see it. You know, yeah. Seth, I just don't. Um, I know you will. Uh, we'll, we got you for this segment. Uh, so we'll just get to a couple of things to kind of transition us to the off season. Yes. I know you've talked on bar down beauties a lot about, and we talked a little bit about it in segment one here today, 
trades. It, it seems like, and you and I have talked about this in the press box too. It seems like there's going to have to be something done this off season to kind of shake this group up. Obviously playoffs being the goal, not getting to the postseason this year. That's where changes come to. So you talked about Philip Gustafson. Are, do you think that it's more likely that the combination next year is Jesper and Flurry uh, in that? Uh, I mean, selfishly, that's what I would prefer, right? I I held off a lot of crit- criticisms on the tandem this year, which I was very proud of. It was growth, Seth. It was growth for me by being a little <laughs> kinder to the goaltenders. Um, but I just have not seen enough of Philip Gustafson. Mark andre Fleury has come in and played spectacularly when he has had to but he wasn't supposed to have to play as much as he was. This was supposed to be Philip Gustafson's growth year. This was supposed to be kind of his coming out party because you saw how tremendous he played last year. And yes, the injury kind of, you know, took him out for a little bit, but that wasn't it. Just some of these goals and kind of his entire demeanor this year seems off. There used to be this calm, cool, confident Philip Gustafson. And I'm not saying he's shaken, but it doesn't have the same vibe. He just doesn't have the same presence about him. So I think Bill Guerin absolutely has to address that. Um, You know, Guerin has enough respect for Marc-Andre Fleury to abide by his wishes. And, you know, I don't think Marc-Andre Fleury is looking to step on any toes. And I don't hate the idea of returning with Fleury and Gus as a tandem because it's not going to hurt Jesper at all staying in the American Hockey League. That is not going to be a problem. It's not going to stymie any growth. You look at UC Soros, who had to be log jammed for quite some time before he was able to get up into Nashville, right? Because when you're playing behind Pekka Rene, that's just what's going to happen. But Yusei was in the AHL for many, many years before he had stepped in, and things have worked out pretty well for him in the Nashville Predators. So I don't hate moving forward on Flurry and Gus, if that's the case. I don't love Gus and Valstead as a tandem. I don't think that's where Jesper learns. I don't have enough confidence in Philip Gustafson, and it's not fair to put Jesper into that spot where he would have to then make up for Gus's lack, lack of play. So you address the three-year extension. You look at what you can do. I think it is going to be a Billy, uh, a Billy, a Billy offseason. It's going to be a busy offseason <laughs> for Billy, is what I meant to say there. Seth. Um, you know, next year you have one more year of this fourteen million dead cap, so it's mm-hmm. not going to be dramatically different. But I think you approach guys with no moves and no trades and see what they are willing to do. I think you do have to look at how you get these younger players in. And how you add some pieces that you're clearly concerned with. I mean, you look back at the blue line. That's an area of contingency. Yes, Brock Faber is doing tremendous things. Yes, Jonas Brodin is. Yes, you hopefully get Jared Spurgeon back without injury next season. But they obviously are not very satisfied with Iowa and the way those blue liners have have per- performed. I mean, if they were, they would have you would have seen them more often than you had. You probably wouldn't see an Alex Goligoski or a John Merrill as frequently as you did here at the, toward the end. Um, you know, Riley Height, I think, is a guy that I'm very excited to see. He's bringing size because that's the other big thing. My final, I'll sum it up here, Seth, and let you speak so I don't take over this podcast <laughs> uh, <laughs> as I have a tendency to do. The final thing is you need to add size. You need to address how small the Minnesota Wild team is you need to add some size so that's the other big thing you look at Gus you look at uh no moves and no trades in what you are able to move and you look at adding some size to the roster heading into next year yeah it's it's just and I got some pushback because I think I think a lot of the people that cover this team are in unison on the you have to get bigger Mm -hmm. and people are like you should be looking to add skill before you add size I don't disagree but mm-hmm. you look at where this this lineup has has gone. They are the smallest team in the NHL in size and weight. And you go up against the teams like Winnipeg. You just get pushed up and down the ice. You go up against the teams like the Stars that are more physical too. Like it's glaring. And it's it's not that you are, you know, you still have to get through next year. But in order to just survive the games, mm-hmm. like you have to be bigger to handle it. I think people confuse adding size with adding enforcers and adding players like that. That's not entirely the case. Like, yes, Marcus Foligno plays that physical role and has that size, but he's a little bit more than enforcer. It's not just Ryan Mm -hmm. Reeves out there, right? And then long gone are the days of just Derek Bougard's rest in peace of where you're just simply on the ice to fight with no additional skill. I mean, players can't play that role specifically. So I think that's where Wild fans have it kind of mixed up a little bit. We're not saying to add 
these fighters. You're not looking for guys yeah. that are going to go out there. I mean, certainly you need you need somebody that's a little bigger than Mason Shaw ready to step into a fight. You don't need Marco Rossi being that guy either. But guys like Matt Boldy, right? Matt Boldy could add a little bit of size to him. You know, you need to have guys that aren't going to get pushed off the puck. And that's the where the size matter comes into play. You need guys, you look at Tyler Sagan, who has body mass but can play. I mean, there's plenty of players out there that are capable of doing that. And, you know, it's a good mix. So that's what Bill Guerin needs to find. We're not saying go out and get the guy that can hammer down another guy fist to fist. It's about adding just bigger guys that aren't mm-hmm. going to get pushed off the puck in those battles. Yeah, you don't need a bottom six of all fighters, but right. you need players that can go win battles and are not afraid to do that. So mm-hmm. It's going to be a busy off season for Billy, as you said, Jesse, and uh, we appreciate you hopping on here today to help us kind of steer the ship in that direction. Listeners, make sure to check out the Bar Down Beauties podcast, weekly episodes, as well as content throughout the week as well. And uh, Jesse, we will see you in the uh, the press box one final time on uh, the 18th. And after that, then uh, we'll probably see you out on the golf course. There's nobody I would have rather have sitting next to me in the press box, Seth. So I appreciate that you've made it this season. And uh, we'll we'll cheers to a good one uh, on the 18th against the Kraken. Listeners, we will finish today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is also brought to you by Game Time. Folks, how many of you have had a frustrating ticket buying experience? Minnesota Twins season is getting underway. Great chance to go see a game at Target Field, but baseball is so weather dependent. So oftentimes you end up waiting just to see if the weather will cooperate before buying your tickets. But if you wait to the last minute, oftentimes you find that seats are crazy expensive. You've got nothing but poor seat choices available. And oftentimes it just doesn't end up working out. Game time is here to make your ticket buying experience as stress free as possible. They offer last minute tickets plus flash deals. Plus they'll show you exactly what you'll see from your seat. And they don't blind you with those hidden fees at checkout. What you see is what you'll pay once you have your tickets purchased. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N N H L for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. One final segment of today's episode of Lockdown Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. We've got another episode coming at you here as we uh, take a look at the Colorado Avalanche roster, similar to how we did for the Dallas Stars. And just looking at how the Avs constructed their roster, obviously Dallas, a little bit more of a draft and develop. Colorado really bottomed out. (laughs) to uh, get the top end talent that they currently possess. So we'll take a look at that for today's second episode. We also have you uh, set for tomorrow's game against the Vegas Golden Knights. And uh, we'll just continue to kind of fully process how we got to this point that the Wilds uh, have been eliminated from postseason contention. Here's what we had today at practice. In Vegas, courtesy of Michael Russo, Kirill Kaprizov, Jewel Erickson Eck, Matt Boldy. No surprises there. Marcus Johansson, Marco Rossi, and Ryan Hartman on line two. Liam Ugrin, Murat Huznadinov, Vinny Letary, then Mason Shaw, Jake Lucini, Adam Beckman, Jake Middleton, Brock Faber, Zach Bogosian, uh, Bogosian Jonas Brodeen. John Merrill, Declan Chisholm, and Alex Goligoski, and Dakota Mermis. No Matt Zuccarello or Freddie Goudreau in practice here today, but as Michael Russo noted, uh, Zuccarello and Goudreau aren't in Vegas for personal matters. Hines says there's a chance one or both of them can return tomorrow. Uncertain as of right now. Liam Ugrin will make his NHL debut regardless. Flurry starts versus Vegas. and. Looking at those line combinations, we're so close. 
So close. Because you're not going to break up Kaprizov, Erickson, Ek, and Boldy. And honestly, that's that's fine. That's okay for me. But if you have a situation in which Matt Zuccarello doesn't play tomorrow, what I would do is I would put the line of Ugrin, who's Nadinov, and Rossi together. Give them an opportunity to just do their thing or put Ugrin, who's Nadinov, and Beckman as your third line. If you want to keep Marco Rossi and Murat, who's Nadinov, as centers right now, I- I'm not going to object. But the fact that we just continue to get the the same players in the same spots, even now as the season is over, is just like we just are continuing to expound upon the same problems in that you're trying to put guys who are not suited for particular roles into spots of great importance. And honestly, at the end of the day, does this mean a whole heck of a lot from a wins perspective? No. These lineups honestly probably put you in more of a position to lose these final four games and give yourself the opportunity to get closer to top 10 for draft position. But what I do like, and these are kind of some of the things I would like to see this team do over these final four games, is just start to pair up. Now, if you want to go, if you want to put some veteran presence with these young players, that's one thing. But I do like that we will get to see likely Liam Ugrin and Murat Huznadinov together because Huznadinov certainly has a, a ton of speed. Ugrin is a, a shooter that has been desperately needed um, on this team by and large. So the fact that those two are going to get the opportunity to play together, it looks like, is something that I, I'm, I'm hugely in favor of. But if you're going to be without Matt Zuccarello in this game, how about we give somebody an opportunity on the power play just to see how they fit in? Like the only way, the only way that you're going to get the opportunity to see how these players do in particular spots is if they are given the requisite opportunities to see how they do. Like you can't just guess hypothetically, well, such and such player has played, you know, six minutes, played six minutes on the fourth line the other night. Things didn't go well. So they're definitely not going to be capable of, uh, of handling more of an opportunity higher up in the lineup. It could be that they're just not suited for it, but it also could be that the fourth line is not a great fit and is not maximizing the skill set that particular players bring to the table. Vinny Letary, very much a grinded out fourth line type player. We don't really know that about some of these other guys. And so give them the opportunity to play with playmakers and to see what they bring to the table um, as part of this evaluation process. It just You just have to really get a scope of what you have at this point with the season winding down with many, many questions um, to be answered with a lot of potential ways that this off season can go. We're, we're setting up for what should be a very talkative off season to say the least. And on the talkative side, had a chance to listen to Liam Ugrin's um, media availability after practice today. Loved what I saw. He is confident enough in what he is putting together that he hopes to win a job out of training camp next season, which would be great. I would be highly in favor of that. But the problem is, is that for him to do so, you got to break some of the ice on this roster. Like you got to break the ice dam that is currently occupying this roster and start to free up some pieces to do so. Could that be where a trade comes in? Uh, That remains to be seen. 
That will do it for today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Uh, reminder, we are going to be full bore into the off season too. Just because the season is over doesn't mean that we stop our episodes. We'll have full coverage for you throughout the off season. We've got some exciting things planned for the draft. We've got uh, a full comprehensive look coming at every part of what happened this season. Big theme will be what went wrong, where do we go from here, and uh, we'll we'll mix plenty in to uh, to bring you a fun off season here at Locked On Wild. So make sure that you hit the like button for today's episode so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. And subscribe if you have yet to already. You can find new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.